and we're on. Good morning. Welcome to Bing TV. Um, we found a very interesting article on the uh, on the Wall Street Journal, are very relevant to our marketplace, um, titled uh, "Snack Vendor Dot 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 or Undercover Job Recruiter." Interesting read that <laughs> got my attention. <laughs> um, read it and, and loved it. Um, pretty much, it talks about the extreme tactics of an executive head. <laughs> Sounds funny. <laughs> Who's got the giggles? Who's tickling over here? This is good. <laughs> uh, anyways, article talks about extreme tactics of uh, executive recruiters and to what lengths these guys will go to find their clients and to find their candidates. So I thought it'd be a good idea to, you know, go through some of these guys' stories, talk about the ethics involved, whether they, you know, should be done, whether you know, recruiters should be going to these great lengths to find their clients and candidates, whether it's too much, borderline legal, who knows. Talk about some of the stories um, that you know we've encountered in our time, some accusations we've. You know, had um, um, and then and then see, see where it takes us. So first story, right? I'm, I'm going to read this guy, this, this um, what this guy did to find his uh, candidate. It was a humid June morning on this guy's fourth day of masquerading as a snack food vendor inside an industrial park. He had one day left on the canteen truck he rented for 500 bucks. The executive recruiter, wearing a hairnet and an apron, finally got a customer to tell him what he needed to know: the identity of a technology guru a client had hired this guy to poach from a competitor. The recruiter, the client didn't know the person's name, so for days the recruiter had been asking every coffee, cigarette, and sandwich buyer who the genius was behind the large, publicly traded company's top-selling piece of software. Finally, an unsuspecting pa patron spilled the beans, and the recruiter got his man. It was real hard detective work, but it was fun, and obviously at the end of the day, worth it. Some people consider this borderline unethical. Some people consider it exactly what it takes to get the top talent you need to drive your organization. I don't, think that's a, I don't think that's unethical. I mean, he's just doing his job. He's just being a detective. I mean, he has to do what he has to do. I mean, there are situations where it is unethical. I think that particular situation isn't. I mean, I think that's completely fine. He had to find a guy. He did it. He didn't like doing anything illegal. He didn't like, I don't know, <coughs> he didn't like blackmail people to do it. He just, you know, went a little undercover and did it. I think this is one of the more creative, but probably, I don't, I think it's more black and white. I think this one pretty much falls into the ethical boundaries. I don't really see what, you know, this guy was doing, maybe a little bit of deception. Um, but past that, I mean, there are, I think there are some stories that we'll discuss a little bit later on that definitely do start borderlining on unethical and, and illegal. But this one, I think, is a great laugh. Um, and I think it's phenomenally intelligent. I think it's just a phenomenal plan on his part. But unethical, I, I don't, I guess I don't see the lines. I think, yeah, I think unethical is kind of a tough word. I mean, he's got no obligation to the company he's poaching the guy from. I mean, what's what's his obligation to them? Why is it an ethical issue? I mean, the company that he's trying to poach the guy out of is probably using the same tactics or employing recruiters to get other people into their company, you know? So what's what's the difference? At the same time, if you can supply hot dogs to 100 employees, I mean, it's like, <laughs> I don't see a downside. I think the only time that, like, the question of the, the question of ethics only comes in or comes down to plain and simple poaching people from another company and well let's yeah. face it doesn't matter if you're wearing a hot dog if you're if you have a hot dog stand and a hairnet or if yeah. you're on the telephone trying to call into the guy's office. I mean that's the only question of ethics here at all and well I think we all know what side of the fence we're gonna fall into on that one. Well so, so I'll, I'll tell you where the ethical question comes in from. So the ethics comes in from, you know, he was deceptive in his tactics to find the name of the individual, right? He clearly didn't do anything illegal, right? Because he didn't steal anything, he didn't like, you know, find proprietary information or anything like that. Um, he did everything just to get a name so that he could then approach the person and try to, you know, pitch him on an opportunity. But the, the ethics question comes into, like, you know, should you be, is it okay to lie to get the information you need to then do your job? Were you lying? Well, sure. He was lying about being a hot dog vendor. He wasn't a hot dog vendor. Sure he, he was. was. For that week, for that week, he was. Right. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, I've had, I've had uh, recruiters that I know call into companies and say, yeah, I'm checking a reference for this guy, you know, have him give me a call back. It's not really any kind of difference. You're being deceptive. It's just on a different level, you know. It's like rusing. It's a rusing technique. Yeah. So you yeah. tell a story to get some information, and then you go straight in with that information to then do your job. Right. I mean, it's it's great to say that um, none of us <coughs> to any extent in any part of our day, but it's not really true. I mean. No um, lie. I think so. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I mean, it's it's not you know blatantly lying. Like if you okay, well here's the thing. If you if you withhold any information, are you lying? Mm, 
I mean, technically it's not a lie, right? Because it's correct. Technically it's not a lie. Yeah, withhold information on one. Well, if you do consider it a lie to withhold information, then you pretty much have to tell every candidate you talk to every single bad thing that's ever happened to a company before you submit your account. And about yourself and about yeah. anything else. It's unrealistic. Yeah. Well, what you don't like about his background and there's no candidates, there's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I also don't want our clients getting any ideas. I'm not going out dressing up like a hot dog vendor. Yeah, is this is this borderline in our in our practice? Is this too much? Um, for what we do, yes. For what they for what like an executive level of recruiter looking for a very very specific person, the money's good enough. Sure, go for it. I don't, I don't think it's too I don't think it's too much at all. I think honestly, there are probably easier ways you could have found out. I have to think you spend enough time digging for information, you spend enough time on the phone and digging around that you're going to figure out who this guy is. Um, seems like you probably could have done it easier, but. Well, he probably had fun dealing hot dogs for the week, so I don't know, maybe it'd be nice to get out of the office. I was, I was about to say, he probably had like a blast doing it. He was like, I don't want to sit in the office making cold calls to every single person asking who this guy is. I'd rather just get get out there, get in the mix of everyone, and figure it out. I mean, who's who's he really hurting the most here? He's probably hurting the, the CEO of the company that he's poaching the guy out of, right? Yeah. Now, is that CEO going to come back to him and say, um, you know, I can't, you know, I'm cool with you stealing my guy, that's fine, but did you really have to dress up like a hot dog guy to do it? You he probably won't. He probably won't. What is he I'm care? not sure it's a good point. What yeah. difference does it make to the company yeah. if you're calling in ethically, you know, straight to the face of the guy or pretending to be a hot dog vendor? Right. To, if, you yeah. ma if you made a call or if you dressed up like a hot dog vendor, at least, you know. It all comes back around to the fact you're trying to, you're trying to Skype their people. Yeah. yeah. So at the, at the end of the day, is it fair to say that, you know, what all's fair and, and all's fair in love and war, right? But is all fair in, in recruiting too? Yeah. No. I, I don't, well, I think... You look at it like war, you know, like business is war, you know? Right. I mean, well, I think... War for talent, right? right? I think some of the stories that we'll get into later, the only reason I say no, I, I think that there are... There's for sure a line. There, there for sure is a line, and I think most of those lines, it, there's there's less of an ethical and unethical line, because let's face it, ethics are a huge gray area, um, but the law is pretty black and white, and I think that there are some stories later on that we'll get into where I think these guys clearly broke the law, that's a little bit, that's a little bit different story. I think we get paid across the line, you know what I mean? That's what our well, job function Companies and us have different lines, right? So there's a line that a company Again, can't cross. Right. Like the, the, the company can't the, send someone into the, their competitor as the a high the, competitor. They can't do that. The greatness right. of that. That's for sure right. unethical, right? right. Is it unethical? Yeah, I think it's unethical, right? That's, 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 that's right. Yeah, unethical. This is business. Headhunter can do that. Yeah. Let's uh, let's let's move on to the next story. Uh, once, after dozens of failed attempts to reach through normal channels, the CEO of a technology firm, this recruiter, he hopped the plane and sneaked into the basement of his uh, competitor's New York workplace and gave a janitor a hundred bucks and a self-addressed envelope. The recruiter says he was counting on his targets having a private washroom with a phone and asked the janitor to send him its number. The recruiter says those digits arrived in the mail a few days later, soon after he scored a meeting with the executive who agreed to take the position the recruiter was hawking. Private washroom, the CEO and other executives use. You needed the number to that uh, office for that washroom. I'm gonna go with that on the line. I love that one. Really? I love that one. See, I go with bribery. Give, yeah, yeah, okay, fine. Giving giving up a hundred bucks for that number is bribery. Yeah. But we I pay, love we, getting the number. Yeah, we for pay that referral washroom. fees. I mean, we pay referral that's bribery fees. too. But yeah, you know, it's borderline business. But that's just a friendly gesture to say thank you. <laughs> I <laughs> I just think it's more awkward having a conversation with an exec while he's using the washroom. <laughs> Could be I always thought that. keys to the executive washroom was just like a myth, you know? Like, I didn't think they really existed. Um, I think this is one of those ones that's, that's <laughs> definitely on the line for me, primarily because one, um, it says snuck into the basement. I, I wonder at times if that's not the recruiter covering his butt for broke into. Uh, the basement, which does come into, and we were actually discussing this this morning, of like, you know, public versus private areas and trespassing and all that kind of stuff, but this sounds borderline trespassing, borderline breaking and entering, borderline bribery. This one's very much on the line for me. I, I would say this one goes too far. See, I say this one's like on the line. I, I don't think it's too far because I think that, like, at the end of the day, he didn't, you know, whatever, the janitor got a hundred bucks, the CEO got a better position, this guy made his money. So he, I, don't, I think it crosses the line when someone gets hurt doing it. He paid for a tip, basically. Yeah. People pay right. for tips all the time. The LA, I mean, police departments pay for tips, right? Our government pays for tips, right? Yeah. Why is it wrong for a recruiter? To well, pay I think for the ethical tips? issue is how did you get in the basement? Really? <laughs> you know, they like flat across. Well, breaking and entering, yeah. I mean, I think I think once you cross the illegal line, that there's a problem. Yeah. 
Okay, so breaking the base was a problem. Finding the champion, yeah. the champion of the parking lot. <laughs> Maybe what it boils down to is I have fewer ethical yeah. issues than legal issues. <laughs> uh, I really, uh, I mean, I think here, like, as I think that at the end of the day, you have to conduct your business within the confines of the law. Well, because yeah. a lot of times you could walk into a company. Companies, some of them are secure, but some of them you just you just walk and you wander around. Sure. You probably like get away with hanging around for a couple of days without people even like noticing who you are or why you're there. Exactly. No, I mean, if this guy genuinely like strolled right. into the building and was just kind of like wandering around, managed to find his way into a basement, found a janitor who was filling up his wash bucket, and you know handed him a hundred bucks, then eh, I'm probably okay with that. But I'm, I'm imagining like some dude like walking around like the side of the building, finding a window ajar, and like slipping down into the basement. <laughs> That's <laughs> like okay. I'm starting to have some issues with that. So uh, 